Alright, welcome back to Rogue Trader, where I like to imagine we've just issued Adira with a notice that she will be off the away team as soon as this mission is over. Because in my opinion, summoning a demon while trying to do your job is pretty much an instant fail in your next performance evaluation. There'll probably need to be some more serious consequences, but we will deal with them later, depending on what sort of uh, options the game gives to me. In the meantime, however, we've been exploring. We found a warehouse, a spooky little warehouse, underneath the roads that we were previously exploring, and I... I like to imagine None that something bad is going to happen here if I know way. anything about game tropes. So, let's have a look inside. We have also gotten some extra levels, but I will go through those soon enough. Okay, I think we have a cutscene. Oh, we have a cutscene. Um, on his journey through the world, through a world caught in the throes of heretical uncertainty, Lord Captain accidentally witnessed an unholy rite that trans an unholy rite. Okay transpired in one of the maintenance rooms of the aqueduct. The abandoned nook turned out to be a heretic's gathering place for performing their grim and profane acts. The rebels were unremarkable in, in appearance. Shabby clothes of abject rabble, spoken coarse voices, had repulsive faces, so classic chaos cult. Strange, almost sinister anticipation in their eyes. This was no gathering of loud blasphemers or bored idlers. Only occasionally would they exchange brief, unintelligible remarks they as they stood in a frozen circle, their gazes turned on a hulking structure in the centre of the room, which I'm guessing is one of those bloody lens things that we destroyed back on the prison planet. So this is clearly a fixture of this sort of cult. Against their background, the structure... An enorm yeah, enormous lens mounted on a stand. It caught the thin sunbeams that made their way through slits in the ceiling and crossed the half-lit room. There's an awareness check here. Lord Captain peered into the darkness enveloping the room. Awareness test succeeded. Although barely visible behind the closed ranks of the insurgents, the rusted barrels, with evidently flammable contents, had not escaped the Lord Captain's keen eye. One good shot at those barrels could decimate a number of heretics on Rykad Minoris. Okay, so they're, they're doing their ritual near explosive barrels. Classic video game enemy logic. As if commanded by a grim unseen force, the insurgents fell silent at once and in a single movement parted. Thick sticky silence filled the room. The structure flashed as a single sun ray illuminated it. The sound of bare feet broke the sinister silence as a man emerged from the deep shadows. Reeling, he entered the circle and collapsed on his knees in front of the enormous lens. Not a second had passed before many rebel hands gripped the fallen man's shoulders and hair. Remember, comrades, the last sun ray you behold will be yours only, shared with no one else your holy final dawn, he bellowed. Okay, I didn't bellow that, because the bellowed came along. But there, you, you, you get the idea. Um, a lone heretic's voice amid the silent crowd. By doing, by the doing of someone's hands, the lens had turned and its focused ray feasted on the prisoner's eyes. Okay, so they blind people, and there's some sort of revelation through shining light through this chaos-infused lens. This makes me very suspicious, and... Yes, a vein is on our ship, but we really need to keep an eye on a vein because he was exposed to some of this stuff, and we don't know if he had the chaos exposure, whether they had just removed his eyes and not exposed him to chaos. But if a vein Winterscale was not a member of a rogue trader family, and I didn't have serious payoff from potentially rescuing him, I probably would have taken the road of caution there. Just like I'm kind of annoyed the game let me discover those weapons on my ship after I had talked to the um, the people on the lower decks but not be able to say, hey, look, I know we defused the riot, but hey, we need to be infiltrating, we need to be sending spies in, we need to be doing sweeps in order to find out what's left. I'm ta I want to take this stuff super seriously. The blinded man's harrowing scream shook the very walls of the place. Uh, consumed by the riot, the rebels had not yet noticed the stranger in their midst. The Lord Captain braced himself and, I can either shoot the warp lens, the fuel barrels, or charge... I'm going to destroy the warp lens, because even though blowing up the barrels will kill people, I'm more worried about whatever warp shittery the lens does. There we go. Somehow that was 40 damage, based on past experience. So let's see if we can deploy everyone forward. How many have we got? 16 cultists. Leader of cultists, acolyte, acolyte, acolyte. Lots of acolytes. Some are weak. Fire starters. Fire starters, I believe, have flamers. Yep, that looks like a hand flamer. So, fire starters are priority targets. Um, let me handle deployment.
Okay, this is my initial deployment pattern as far forward as I can get because I want to get Argenta and her flamethrower into this mass before they get to take a significant number of turns. And the way we do that, Adira might also be able to get some damage down, but for the moment let's get Argenta moving. The way we do that is with a casual dash, shoot this guy once, and then the running gun gives us additional mobility. I will bathe this battlefield in and you can see she's fury. already almost in range. Just to move up to cover. Cassia is in. Step aside. The navigator is coming. She can lidless. I am a navigator. Not a bad open up. Let's see if we do that or if this triggers her seize the initiative turn. Nope, she can go again. Lovely. That's thinning the ranks a little bit. Perun moves up. Okay, so the leader of the cultists is unsurprisingly enough a psyker. So let's go uh, joint analysis, which is an ability that increases all of our allies' damage. Let's drop a buff on our squad, which I believe reduces recoil and enemy dodge, which will help Argenta even more. And then we'll take one shot. We have one bolt around. I've given him a bolter. Not great odds. But he hits it and lands it anyway. How dare you? Cassie is wounded, but she regenerates heaps. Which is why I've been willing to expose, uh, put her into an exposed position. I think we'll flame these guys first. Faith without deed is a there we go. Which means we can instantly go into Revel. That is not the Emperor's will. Probably dash out this way. As the Emperor commands, I act. We'll go Doubt run and gun. Since we just reset it. And that should allow us to flame up over here. Okay, we can only get those or those. I think we'll, we'll take the we'll take the kill, I think. Because if we do that. We can also then go. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And then we can take one bolt around. Send that this way. Fantastic. Should turn us into full momentum mode. It does. Alright, so we're down 50% on enemy cultists, and we have our ultimate, which means it's time, or almost time, for the rampage. If only that were possible. I have read tomes of military. Let's give Argenta the extra turn. Faith without deeds is worthless. Argenta can go rebel. I'll do it. For the Which gives us just that little bit extra momentum. Cassia can go out this way, I believe. Emperor, we'll be able to live this. We can. If I may, Not bad. She didn't roll her refresh from the kills, that's unfortunate. But what we can do is immediately go. Give her a stat buff. And My begin the Cassia Rampage. 
Be careful not to cross my gaze. We need to put her in a position. Yep, she can get all of them right. Yes, she can. Fantastic. So she can go Isn't one. A job for Step. In Two. Three. Four. Where's the remaining one? Right there. Leader of cultists. Me. KO. Alright, let me clean this up. So as I'm going through the environment here, I'm discovering that these guys were receiving messages, it looks like. Warning them of my arrival. Yeah, Aurora's Harbingers wish you to know, comrades, that the Von Valencia ship is heading for the Navigator Station. Von Valencia's ship has set off for Rykod Philia. We pray that our comrades manage their there managed to vanquish Aurora's enemy on their own, but you must anticipate the worst and do everything to make sure his path definitively ends on Rykad Minoris. I reckon we got a spy on our ship. <laughs> and apparently these people are Aussie. Um, we've intercepted a convoy of the governor's underlings who were supposed to meet that Von Valancius bloke. Direct quote. Only one other whole convoy got away, but he's not long for this world. Our comrades have got their hands on a on the guard's voxcaster, which is a um, a radio. Basically, it's a radio. It's a piece of communication equipment. These fools have no clue. We can hear all their comms. Well, that explains how everything is so coordinated. Aurora must have no doubts that we'll do whatever it takes to stop her enemies. Let the final dawn come. Okay, so we have a spire Victory on our awaits. ships. Fantastic. Back to the looting. And then we will continue. I think there's also a puzzle in this room, which I will solve before we move on. Okay, I just spent like 10 minutes solving a puzzle that involved tracing wires and following instructions. And the loot was awful. Like, it's a stub carbine and a flamer. So, good job. But at least, at least we get experience for solving the whole thing. The None next thing I wanted to do my way. is I found a path to the sewers. And I'm thinking the sewers underneath a cult hangout... That's somewhere we should go check if we want more experience points. I'm thinking, so off we go. Uh, there's more loot, we will collect that all into the cargo hold. We have so much cargo, so as soon as we get somewhere where we can start Victory handing that awaits. off to people, um, in exchange for reputation and items, etc. Although our profit factor is still very low, both because I didn't loot the navigator station, I took the spaceship upgrade instead, and because I hired Adjuster, we really need more profit factor, I imagine. So. Um, okay, these people are very scared of us. Stop. There. And we have law warp checks. The cinch symbols. Written on the ground. Um, this is actually really spooky. I guess I'm going to have a look around. So I have Adira just check that out. Slight prickling sensation in the back of your head. The barrier between the worlds has grown so thin here you can feel a breeze coming. Oh no. Hey, your virtuousness. How are you doing? Maybe not the place for chats, guys. I was guys. born to wage war against darkness. I am always doing wonderfully when danger is near. You're new to the art of exploring. Interesting. The underhive is not mining as Crimson we walk around. Enemies will perceive no That's weakness. That's a body. Not even if you are bleeding. My augmentations allow me to function effectively. All right. Well, this guy is probably in. Oh, look at him. That man's got claws on his feet. Oh, the irony. Oh. Okay. That's an Herald of Siege. 160 wounds, 65% armor. Warp creature, so conventional weapons are going to struggle. Ethereal flames, dash, warp creature, gains armor equal to its willpower. Jeez, okay. 
Manifestation. Whenever the demon enters combat, each party member suffers minus... Uh, oh, minus momentum, jeez. When the demon dies, each party member gains 30 momentum. Psy rating 2. Okay, so it's a more powerful Psyker than Adira by some way, which I would expect. Okay. Uh, I think what we want to do is gank it as quickly as possible. Everyone gets psychically very unhappy as a result of what just happened. I really wish I could move Pascal in. I'm reconsidering a spec cast Pascal in a very neutral, debuffy sort of way, but he looks like he has a lot of melee potential. If we're not going to have Abelard or another melee fighter on the team, I'm not sure who else will recruit. Um, it may be worth specking Pascal towards a melee rock, but we will see. For now, let's start getting some shots down. Argenta, if you would be so kind. Lord, that thing is dodgy. That thing is dodgy. You, my 14 damage is okay, but we've got 160 hit points to go through. Said our only option is to start. Faith without so let's start plinking. Another 12. Nothing I can't do. We'll do the usual get one extra bonus turn by relaying if the bring it down through Cassia. Not, Captain. As the Emperor commands, I act. Ah, that wasn't quite as impressive. Move Cassia out to here. Just give her a little more space. Forge ahead! I like that. Okay, we're mind controlling. Fantastic. And we're dropping flames. Oh, but the good guys, non manipulated underhivers, are coming to our assistance. Okay, I'm happy with this, sort of. Well, I'm not happy. Um, I'm very disappointed that Argenta now, uh, sorry, Cassia now appears to be in melee, which is not where she wants to be at all. My tactics are flawless. So I think we need to remove that first. Take the 75. No problem, stand a chance. I would have loved to put that on the Herald, but we need her out of harm's way. Plus five characteristics. Till Noble's next turn. Do we want to buff Cassia or do we want to buff Argenta? We're going to compromise. We're going to give Cassia the extra turn, and unfortunately what she has to do is Vok Arun right back, because I would love to, like, nuke this, but this guy's going to get an attack of opportunity. Oh, she can't even kill him. She needs to break contact. And then I think that's the go, so... Vok. Bang. Oh, it teleports when it's... Okay, fantastic. Cool, cool. Be careful not to cross my gate. There is nothing wrong here. We'll chase it because we need to get more turns onto her and... she Because she's the one who's going to do the damage. She just did 51. Argenta is very good at clearing chaff, but it is absolutely Cassia who kills bosses. She is the machine that kills bosses. Okay, Adira is in close combat, which we don't like. Fantastic, we can give Cassia an extra turn from here, because she is under Vok. We can clear three noobs, or we can put another gaze down on the Herald which I think will cause it to teleport again, which may not be a great idea. So let's... Oh, wait, no, we can get... Look at that gaze. Yes. If I may. It teleports, but... 
those underhivers are gone. Thank you very much. These ones are unfortunately mind controlled, but that's okay. And Cassia can keep chasing the bad guy. And by the bad guy, I mean the literal demon. We'll Vok Argenta. And help Adira out. Which gives us a finest hour. Which means we need line of sight. If we can get line of sight on Cassia, I think we can end this. Pascal is being swarmed with melee, but that's okay. We can survive that. Adira. I know what needs to come. We'll do. We're not going to have range or line of sight on any of them, are we? No. Anything else? That would have been really convenient, but we don't have it. So instead, what we can do is On it. clean up that melee threat. Oh, we can't clean it up. It's okay. All right, Argenta. There's a straight through shot here. Then we can rebel and dash. Pascal, so far away from anyone that I'm pretty sure joint analysis has unlimited range. We can buff debuff our squad. And then he gets one shot, one opportunity. We won't throw it away, we'll finish the guy off. Which he will parry, so we will throw away our shot. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, can we, is anyone in range of... No one will be in range, will they? Oh no, the guys who are under voice of command are. Because we may as well not waste this. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. All too easy. I reckon I take that 56%. Didn't turn out that way, that's okay. But what I really wanted to do was what I just did. Where did it go? Or did I kill it? Herald of Cinch dead. Fantastic. Um, please look at these people disapprovingly. That is foolishness. If only that were possible. Me. The fury of I was hoping they would be unmind controlled after the demon went, and then they could merely be, you know. Actually, let's, let's be fair, it's probably over for them. I am a this is a game of point and click. Love the fact we've leveled up. And what we can do is we can bounce the turns back to anyone we can see. Unfortunately, I don't think I can see anyone. 
So we are going to waste that last action point, but that is okay. Because we get an extra turn, well, our normal turn now. That is unfortunately on cooldown. Who do we want to give the Rampage to? I think the answer is Perun. Because he can now go bang. I said bang. Thank you. Bang. Bang. Oh, okay. That was a little more intense. Underhive Rabble, not a problem at this point. Demons with those sort of abilities that can suddenly swarm you, surround you from multiple directions, give you all sorts of debuffs and psychic powers. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit more of a problem. So, let me get to looting and leveling. I'm excited to see what we have for our characters next. I'll go through it in a moment. Okay, so Cassia has finally picked up Mind Over Matter. She's currently got a Willpower debuff because she is injured. That was unfortunate head trauma in one of her earlier fights, which we can't clear just yet. But it's already bumped her up to 43 hit points, which makes her by far the tankiest member of the squad. Far tankier than Abelard was, and this number will go even higher when she's not injured, and her Willpower bonus goes from 5 to 7. So... She's now rolling her resistances against willpower. She's regenerating willpower bonus per turn. Um, like, and she's calculating her wounds off willpower. Amazing. So she's super tanky. We'll finally get Argenta rapid fire. And I don't need much from her, to be honest. I mean, she can be a backup Law Imperium character for Perun. Or she can go athletics, because I don't think anyone currently has athletics in our squad. That was Abelard's job, so we'll give Argenta some athletics for the moment. Um, and I'll finish the rest of them off screen and then talk through what I picked. Okay, so we took Perun up to agility. So he's now 65 agility, mind you, with all the buffs in play. So that's giving him a 100% base dodge, which is not a bad place to be. And we've also given him focus. So every time he gives an officer ability on an ally, they get a perception and ballistic skill bonus equal to his fell bonus, which is currently 7. So if he stacks three of those a turn, that's 21 Ballistic Skill. Half of those stacks are lost per turn. But I guess if we have multiple officers doing it, we should get somewhere. Pascal has gotten uh, Law Xenos. So he's now 80, 85, and 80 across Law Xenos, Tech Use, and Logic, which are his three primary skills. And I've temporarily given him... Because I'm probably going to respec him. I'm going to try the melee build. So we've got Acceleration Protocols. He gets Intelligence Bonus Movement in the first round of every combat. And every successful melee attack gives him... Intelligence bonus divided by two, I think, rounded down. So another three movement points the next round. Um, and I've also given him, previously, an ability that says, as long as he's got that buff on himself, um, the one that he gives to the whole area, then his melee bonus goes up by, like, his intel. He gets heaps more damage. Uh, other than that, you'll be surprised to know that the super poor under high rabble um, didn't None actually have any way. good loot. I'm kind of nervous about leaving the remaining ones here, given they just saw a demonic manifestation. Um, might want to tell the Inquisition about that, because serious danger, just like there's a danger on the ship, but at least there I have troops who can keep an eye on it. Um, this whole area, not just this area, but this whole area, probably needs to be thoroughly swept and some serious um, spiritual decontamination protocols probably need to be undertaken. But we'll see if I can tell the Inquisitor about that. I don't think there's anything I can actually do within the bounds of the game. So we've destroyed a Chaos Ritual location. We've killed a Herald of Seach. Um, and contained a potential demonic None outbreak in the sewers in and underway. Way. I think that's all there is to do in this area. So we're off to the western side to finally, hopefully, say hello to the Governor. And we might be able to ask the governor some questions, like how did you not notice the bloody chaos cult or anything like that? Although then again, the previous captain of our ship didn't notice the chaos cult being run by her master of whispers. Um, and me, with my policy changes, may be going a little light on them too. Looks like we've got more rebel troopers and some captives. Victory this looks like a hostage situation. Ten people, children among them, are huddled together in fear. You can see half of them have black holes where their eye used to be. 
Some maintain a gloomy silence, others are wailing. Several armed insurgents are carefully watching over the terrified hostages, snapping every now and again at someone who are for shaking too much or crying too loudly. Elderly citizen. Come to your senses, uh, Arald. Look at what you're doing to your own... F oh, God, this is someone's family. Uh, a woman of about 60 grey-haired, but still strong, is kneeling before a stocky man with a thick, pure white beard, stretching her arms towards him. Take pity on us, let us go. Fanatical man, stop talking and embrace redemption. Our children have gained true sight, while you still believe the lie. Then the man sees us, points a weapon at us. Who are you and why are you here? Are all these people your family? Let's see if let's see if he's got any humanity in him at all. All of my adopted and blood children are here. I raise them all as my own, and now I must protect them, help them see. Cassia. His mind and soul are pierced by shards of a colourful deception. Hughes, once twisted by despair and the Immaterium's influence, can never be the same again. Pascal. Layperson, cogitation is not your primary function. You are saving your kin by holding them at gunpoint and believe that burning their eyes will grant them sight. It is evident that the author of the demagogic teaching that confused you meant to make a mockery of your deplorable intellect. Um, what are you trying to save them from? At Aurora's behest. Okay, so definitely chaosy. Aurora is the great prophet and the great warrior. Their face is shrouded, but their gaze pierces the veil of time and sees into the future. I always knew the governor's dogs were hiding the truth from us, and now the day has come. A prophet has come to Rykab Menorus and opened our, di our eyes. The end of the world is coming, the final dawn. Okay. Alright, so how do we deal with this? There would be an Iconoclast option, but it's not there. I can order him, I can attack, or I can use a logic check. You have been torturing your own family in order to save them. You have been blinding them so they can see the truth. I mean, I'm okay. We're, we're going to try and use logic on someone who's fallen into a Chaos Cult, and I would love to see if this works. Those who lack faith cannot grasp the truth and cannot be saved, but we have more options. So there's persuasion. Aurora, whoever that is, has exploited your naivety. Can't you see you're causing nothing but suffering? There's logic. Think about it. What good has the final dawn done for anyone all? Some have died. Some have their eyes burned out. Some have gone insane. Or there's law imperium. You believe the heretic's lies. You sold your soul to the arch enemy. But if you renounce this path, you will still have a chance to be truly saved. I mean, the persuasion has a 100% chance. But Imperium is on brand. Let me think about this. Okay, so even though I'm a talky-talky person, I'm actually going to try for the on brand Law Imperium option. You believe the heretic's lies, you sold your soul. The old man sighs heavily. I don't need your mercy, protect my family, and as for my own fate, I place it in your hands. Yeah don't we can let him go or we can kill him he is seriously seriously like compromised and the fact that he has turned around at the last moment um nah i i he's had his eyes removed he's been seeing the sights he's not under constant supervision um yeah i think we're gonna go dogmatic your family will be taken care of as for you i condemn you to death I feel like let it, yeah. Hopefully that one made sense. Ooh, bolt pistol. Chainmail, frag grenades. I love some frag grenades. Bolt pistol, 8 to 12 damage. Who is currently using pistols? I'm not sure we have any pistols in our lineup at the moment, other than as backups for... And she doesn't have bolt training. A new challenge for me? Let's disarm some of these traps. Never doubt me. I'll sweep the area, but hey, we had a peaceful ending to the hostage situation of sorts. Um, to be honest, that's probably a better ending than him continuing with the cult, to be honest, given what we just saw down in the sewers. Let me sweep this area, see what I can find. 
Undoubtedly okay, we found something spectacular. We didn't find much incredible. Back down um, in the sewer, we got this thing, a hypnotizing pendant, which I kind of don't want to wear. That it says, when the wearer successfully hits with a single shot attack, the target suffers slowed until the wearer's next turn. But it does say Mechanicus creation, so maybe that's Mechanicus, but you guys tell me if you think this is too suspicious or not. The real win is this, Ancient Terra Monocle. The wearer's lore Imperium tests depend on fellowship instead of intelligence and gain a plus three bonus. Which means we now get to roll lore Imperium at 83 for Perun, which is great. Because now, I'm not sure who I was giving lore Imperium, I don't have to anymore. So Perun can handle Persuasion, Commerce, Coercion, and lore Imperium. Uh, Pascal can handle Law Xenos, Tech Use, Logic. Argenta handles Demolition, Athletics. Cassia handles um, Perception, Awareness, and that's probably it for the moment. So really all we need is the Law Checks being done. Pascal's got Law Xenos, so we just need Law Warp, which is currently Adira, but... Basically, we just need someone else who can handle Law Warp, and Athletics, I have never seen a single carousing check. But I think we're pretty close to having it's all the skills time. covered at a really high level, which is one of the key things I want in a party. I think that's it. I think I've swept the area. So I think we're going to head to the Command Center next, uh, and have a word with the Governor about I the state of his planet. Okay, to the Command Center. Wow, okay. Uh, apparently we put our Command Center on an ammunition depot. This seems stupid. Like, incredibly stupid. I would not put the command center in the magazine. But, you know, okay, they do them. We have leveled up again. I found a great way to get a bunch of experiences passing skill checks. So, Argenta just milks in the um, experience points by disarming all the traps that have been everywhere. So, I can level everyone up again. I'll be back shortly, talk about what I've done with the team. This is amazing. Okay, here we go. And we'll finish with Cassia, because she's obviously overpowered. Um, so, Justa has picked up Move, Move, Move as an officer and ability, and No, No Heresy. No, No Heresy drops your Law Warp and Law Xenos into, like, the point where you can never even roll the check. So they're at negative 170, negative 170. But in exchange, you get 10% critical hit chance and 10% armor against Xenos and demonic creatures. We're now encountering some demons, so I figured this was good. And allies get half that bonus again. So allies get 5% crit hit chance and 5% armor. No, remember, we're stacking critical hit chance on Argenta, so every little bit helps. Speaking of which, she has also taken No No Heresy, so she'll get plus 5% from Justa if she's around and plus 10% from herself. Add in um, Unpredictable back here, which is adding like 20 something percent uh, crit chance, and we're starting to really stack it up, especially once Revel and Slaughter starts to uh, multiply in a big way, because every Revel and Slaughter instance adds 17% critical damage and 6% critical hit chance. So really stacking it up, and then also grab some strength, because I'm thinking she might want to go heavy weapons later, um, which requires strength as I understand it. Not sure how much, but I figured it was time to start getting some. Adira leveled her up, Psy rating 1 and Prescience, not too important because I want to fire her soon. Pascal grabbed Perfect Spot, which is increases the cover efficiency of cover and gives him 15 perception and ballistic skill while in cover. And Pinnacle of Weaponry, which is a buff to Plasma, Melter and Power Weapons, with Power Weapons being his melee, and eventually I want to give him a Plasma or Melter as his range. Perun grabbed Move, Move, Move. And you go on, which means his servant has plus two movement points. I don't know if that includes bonus turns, but we will soon find out. If so, it's a great pick. If not, it's a bit meh, um, and I might respec him out of it. Cassia grabbed Reveal the Light. Target gains four times the Navigator's Willpower bonus to Willpower and Toughness until the end of combat. Um, so that should make our guys really tanky. And then she also grabbed Eye of Oblivion. Every enemy that the Navigator has in their line of sight has its dodge and hit chance reduced by twice her perception, which, when she is not wounded, um, is... She's got a six perception bonus, at least soon to be seven, I would hope. Um, so, yeah, 14% negative to their dodge and to hit chance just for having her in line of sight. Fantastic. And applies from 
uh, spot one in the combat. Just put her in line of sight, and even if they take their turns earlier in the initiative order, their dodge and hit chance is nerfed, and I'm mostly interested in nerfing the hit chance. That's that. Let's drop a save and go talk to the governor. I'll lay claim to the stars. Welcome to the Rikad Minoris Command Center. Okay, nice digs, nice digs. What's going on over here before we talk to Governor Medina? This cogitator looks older and more worn than the others. Sorry about that, had to take a call, but we're inspecting this cogitator. One of the side panels has been removed, bundles of notched cables running to a small data crypt, which is a data storage, hard drive, fancy space hard drive. Awaiting access code. Oh, Pascal, get us in. Uh, go to Sacred Computation 782.5-5-M, uh, Recent Observations or To Be Investigated. Recent Observations. Uh, satellite report, ship signal has been broadcast through the system, its signature is consistent with the records of the flagship of the Von Valencius Dynasty. Da -da -da. Okay. A ship drifting nearby has hurriedly sped away. The ship has sent an encrypted box transmission to insurgent controlled areas of Rykab Minoris. Both transitions were signed Brother Twilight. Okay, so there's another ship in system that is coordinating these uprisings. Okay, they've got the coordinates for a potential insurgent base. We might want to go there. Okay, and the connection is because it looks like they're querying every auger up. Uh, sensor record okay so there are some set sensor satellites they've got some uh, elint satellites in orbit it sounds like and they've been pulling those records in order to try and track down who is coordinating the insurgents and where the insurgents are okay the purpose of the sacred computation requested by the logist is to uncover the external influence behind the ongoing insurgency that makes sense. Computation result positive. Multiple instances of interference and malfunction detected, suggesting the ships moving across the system deliberately blinded the sacred augur's eyes. First of these ships is thought to have arrived two Rikad Minora cycles ago, early in the winter. The most recent one arrived a month ago. So we've got two insurgent ships. Conclusion, the insurrection has been long in the making with the participation of external actors. Aurora arrived two cycles ago. The rumoured unholy prophet of the insurgents. The subsequent ship movements can be attributed to weapon deliveries, but what is the nature of their activity near Rykadi Philia? Governor Medina's attention must be drawn to, and then the final entry cuts off abruptly, I'm assuming because the uprising commenced. Okay, Trail interesting waits. background. What about over here? Nope, all that's fine. There's the governor. Save. Talk to him. Tall, dark-skinned man turns towards you and greets you in a curt military manner. Faisal, Faisal Rikardi Ab Medina Afkaronis, governor of the star system, welcome to my temporary headquarters. Then he turns to Calciot, Lady Navigator, what an honour, I never thought that House of Celia would grace our world with a visit. I only wish I could have received you under different circumstances. House of Celia is grateful for the support you have provided to Iraq 5 these many years. I'm not seeing the convoy I sent to meet you, what happened? Did they find you and fail to escort you? No. Nope. The convoy was ambushed and massacred. The only surviving soldier turned out to be a traitor and was personally executed by me. Governor Medina, that is an outrage. I will have a personal vetting procedure changed immediately. The slightest suspicion will be grounds for arrest. Your Lordship, before we proceed with discussing the matters that are of interest to you, there is a question I feel compelled to ask. It was only recently that Lady Theodora was head of House of Valancius. How is it you are now rogue traitor? Interesting. So I can either say that she died at the hands of cultists, made the Emperor incinerate the souls, our ship was attacked, Theodora was killed, and I claim my inheritance, that is all you need to know, or I should be the one asking that question, our ship was attacked by heretics, they killed Lady Theodora. I think we're going to go with number three. 
rogue trader von Valencia slain. Unthinkable. Please accept my deepest and most sincere condolences. I just don't want to mention there are cultists on my ship, <laughs> even if there totally are, and they are probably going to be an ongoing problem, although I hope most of them rose up and were destroyed in the uprising. Um, yeah. Commerce 40. I need fresh crew to replace those killed in the attack on the ship, and I need material compensation. There you are. Of course, your lordship, you'll be compensated for any losses, and I'll see to it personally that your ship's hold will filled with the finest goods from my personal reserves. There we are. Profit factor gain too. Fantastic. 28 experience. I can offer you several thousand fine obedient servants, however, I'm sad to inform you I won't be able to do it until we've dealt with the insurgency. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do Sergeant Malgara. I'm going to give Sergeant Malgar a call, uh, a shout out. There we are, calling out Sergeant Malgar. Okay. He's saying go look at the Cogitator for records of uh, Conrad, which I will do, but I think I already did that. Uh, Heinrich von Kallox. Oh great, finally, someone knows where the bloody interrogator is. I do, Master von Kallox has left uh, for the hallowed Electrodynamic Synobium. It's an ancient monastery of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Don't know what his objectives are. Insurgent activity has been observed in the vicinity. The weapon the insurgents were using to shoot down the shuttles has been destroyed. Now nothing is preventing you from returning to your ship. If you wish to find Master Van Kallox, you should go to the Synobium of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Pascal's coming in. On behalf of the Priesthood of Mars, I, Magos Hanneman, am officially initiating my participation in this operation. I must inspect the state of the relic and assure myself that it is under zero risk of falling into heretic hands. Oh, so there's a relic at the Synobium. Okay. Okay, so apparently the place was meant to go into lockdown, so he wants us to bring us along, bring him along to make sure everything is okay. Oh, but he's saying he wants to keep Pascal around. Oh, he wants to forcibly recruit Pascal. Ha. I mean, I could step in here, but I actually think Pascal can handle this. Um, the Governor does not have the right to conscript members of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, I'm pretty bloody sure. <laughs> okay, Pascal's appointing... Um, Okay, um, so apparently he just threatens him with a weapon. Okay. I'm going to say it would be my pleasure to assist the Omnisire servant in reaching the Sanctum. As compensation for your consideration of the request, I, Magos Hanum, officially undertake to accompany you in the Rykat system, the role of bodyguard, and protect you at all costs, but only within the limits of the Rykat system. Uh, I'm not going to ask why he's not shelling the monastery. I'm going to ask why the governor is confused about the name. Okay. This he the governor is saying that he thought that um, Hanneman already sent, but that was Logis Abel Hanneman already sent off to the Cenobium. Interesting. So Pascal is saying, I'm Pascal Hanneman, I don't know Abel. What do you know about Abel, Governor? I've never met him in person. That esteemed loader supervised the works of Rykad Minoris Lex Mechanics for many years. However, he rarely left his chapel. Where can I get more information on this individual?
Okay, so they're saying check out the cogitators again. Okay, Pascal saying we need to investigate um, that this the name being used might be a cover. If you stare in the shattered mirror for too long, you might see yourself in it in every shard at once. Many, so okay. Remember how we've already seen that Pascal doesn't know how he does everything that he does. I'm wondering if there's just spitballing here, like a right of duplessence or something going on here. Duplessence is where you have two brains, one preserved artificially connected and the tech priest actually has two minds operating in a single body or something like that. Like, I feel like there's either two personalities, two consciousnesses, something like that going on with Pascal. Or it's in a different individual with a cover for the Archmage. There's a dozen things it could be, but that's just one of the things that's occurring to me so far. Do I risk insulting his competence? Oh great, I can tell there that he's being, his communications are being listened to. It's not much, but it's something. I'll order an order of our equipment to see that communication channels are more... Uh, how is only accidental success? Uh, the insurgents are using the arch enemy's artifacts and enchanted lenses to perform unholy sorcery. Man, he's not listening. Like, there is a chaos cult leader. <laughs> like, there is a chaos cult leader, there are artifacts or whatever. Okay, finally. We got through to him. I basically said he has to leave his bunker more often, and he's, and he's finally come around. All right, all right, perhaps I've underestimated the mutiny, writing it off as the rabble's usual nonsense. However, if it does not, if it does involve corruption and underground cult, this needs to be investigated. I'll assign additional resources to it and take the issue seriously. You have my word, your lordship. Okay, we got through to him. It's about time. Hopefully, hopefully, that has an impact. I'll see if there's anything else in the cogitators. Da -da 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 -da. None of this makes sense to me. The revelation there okay. The revelation granted to me by Omnisire by the Omnisire to Lodges Abel in the course of his data meditation has been recorded verbatim. Abel is seeking an audience with the venerable Da Impulse 6. Okay, so a tech priest called Abel was granted a revelation and wanted to go to the Electrodynamic Synobium to talk to this individual. Pascal says, the cycle can be discontinued, I recognize these words. I believe I know the intended recipient for the message in the Foribunda system, it was me. Omnisai, grant me wisdom to fathom this mystery. I think you have two personalities, mate, or something. I might be barking up the wrong tree, but I think you have two identities, two personalities, two minds, two personas, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's you. You're the problem. It's you. Okay, I don't think we have anything else to do here, so we can head out. The key the key thing there was getting the governor to take the rebellion seriously. And yes, I insulted his competence, maybe it wasn't diplomatic, but I need him to take this seriously, or this planet, this whole planet might be in danger. Um, so hopefully he's taking the problem seriously now, because I can't kill every demon personally. And perhaps Perun's character, which is a little bit naive, a little bit forgiving, you saw some of that on the void ship, um, or on my void ship, maybe he's learning some of the dangers of Chaos Cultists in a little more personal manner, and maybe that'll cause him to question his own decision making going forward. We shall see. Anyway, that's probably a good place to leave it there. We've weirded out a Herald of Zinch. We've made some serious ground on this planet. We've talked to the Governor, hopefully encouraged him to take the war effort more seriously, asked ourselves some questions about Pascal, got Cassia more overpowered abilities, and next turn, uh, next uh, video rather, 
we have to head to the Cenobium, the Mechanicus outpost, and find ourselves at last this interrogator of the Holy Orders of the Inquisition. Hope you're enjoying, and I'll see you again soon.